Welcome back you space gazers of light. Hell, it's about time. Yes, time for another 10 most epic weapon video and I know some of you waited for this in excitement. Nonetheless, I'm glad to have waited because the one or the other weapon actually made it to the list that had just recently been introduced to the game. So listen up, load up your guns and enjoy my personal 10 best looking machinist weapons that are available in Final Fantasy XIV up to the patch 6.31. Starting with one that I didn't recognize much before, but when going over the whole machinist weapon selection again, measuring the differences and specialties these guns have to offer, the Susaku's Flame Kiss Revolver offers a unique blast gun style, which believe it or not hasn't got many representatives. It's a bit all over the place, but definitely a very impressive and budget alternative to the Abyssos pistol, at least when you subscribe to the sentence of time is money as you can simply take a short walk to the market board and, for example, buy out all the stupid undercutters. Uh, sorry, this beautiful weapon, of course. Which brings us to another easy catch in the form of the augmented Deep Shadow Pistol, received from Lagan Tombstones of Poetics in Yulmore, that offers a very mild tone ranging more into the stealth department, but still retains glowing effects with the red lines and marks over the whole body. I really like these weapons and they might have been the first currency gear that had a very special look to it and the mixture of Dark Souls Metal Foundation and the Alagan Energy lines are just a beauty to behold. A bit more expressive and loud, we are facing the augmented Law's Order Revolver that takes us back into the Bosjan Southern Front and its follow-up content, featured in the Shadowbringers Rally questline. And while this might be a bit tricky to get right now, I'm still hoping for Square Enix to make this content a bit more replayable, not so dependent on massive player events that are really fun when doing those for the first time, but whenever it is old content, it is really hard to conserve. However, the weapon should not be matched against the difficulty of this content, because otherwise, ultimate weapons are really tough recommendations. So what we're actually looking at is a double revolver style gun that has a very cool flame glow around its end. A fiery shot into the blue with augmentation to preserve the law's order. Rank number 7 then takes a good step back, which some of you guys keep wishing for in these videos and I agree. Glow doesn't automatically make a weapon cool, which is definitely shown by the Manderville revolver. A simple yet effective design for the gunner with minimalistic precision, whose only purpose is to protect the ones they love the house they own or fight for the American freedom. I will save, I will sacrifice. I'm still excited to see the next stage of it coming soon, so make sure to follow my channel for the showcase of these beautiful augmented Sigmaville weapons or however they might be called. Staying at the same design territory, there's one gun that really stood out to me for the non-glowing weapons. It is one of the darkest around featuring the Lakeland Culverin, which you can receive from the level 71 Shadowbringers dungeon. The biggest selling point for me is the clean dark look with a bit of an Ishgard cannon vibe. It is a really cool choice when you favor those old and medieval style guns over flashy glowing stuff and I really just love the dark color tone of it. Just leave the level 71 dungeon a visit with your trust party and you should have it very quickly. Alright, rank number 5 is a weapon I assume many of you would put way higher, possibly even on the highest spot, but let me tell you one thing. I love the color scheme, I love the cogwheels and the design idea but the final finish is just done a bit poorly. Not as bad as the Dragon Song finish, but it is not fair to call this a very clean look still. On the other hand, it is a stylish weapon indeed, featuring some very cool ideas and pistol style. Just that you have to touch the Epic of Alexander, which is among the top 3 most difficult fights this game has to offer. On a step down in difficulty level, you can get the Abyssos pistol that is the exact opposite in my opinion. It is insanely clean, even though it offers a special glow effect in the form of these very interesting flames that somehow give the impression of resources being heated up and used to fire up this weapon. I like that a lot. Just participate in the Pandemonium Abyssos sector in its savage difficulty level and at some point these should be yours. The only thing that holds this back is the little extra something that this weapon is lacking and that the ultimate Armageddon is having too much of. And don't get me wrong, other Abyssos weapons do indeed offer that unique feature or graphical element. It's a very cool idea and weapon, but falls a bit short against the competition. So I guess we need to venture onwards to the podium to meet those classifications, starting with the Rubellox Knife Lock on number 3. I absolutely didn't expect a market board weapon to land on such a high spot, but it definitely did. And this is well deserved. Yes, it is insanely overboard, but the purple glow around the center of the weapon really emanating that Project Meteor vibe, amazing. 
Above that, while being bulky and massive, the fang and blade style at the front is something you won't find on any other machinist weapon, which gives it the impression to be useful in melee combat as well, or at least for protecting yourself against bugs. Just leave your market board a visit, as prices have dropped significantly, especially when you can craft them by yourself. Okay, I wasn't entirely sure if this is because I have this weapon in possession for quite a while, but I wanted to put it to the first spot when thinking about this video. But even when technically not being there, it comes very close, and is among my absolute favorite weapons of all times. The fact that you can choose between two different color schemes in the normal or the Lux version makes these anima weapons still stand out so much that I actually cannot believe they haven't covered this idea another time. Sometimes color schemes are hit or miss, and having the option to backtrack to another weapon just to change this is simply genius. Especially when you're looking at a design like this one here. It's at least that machinist weapon I used most for shooting backgrounds. And then the energy form dragon figure coming out of the top makes this just a brilliant pick. Especially that it has a slight color shift going on as well. The gun itself actually looks a bit weird, but nobody looks at the gun when you're wearing this, right? And above that, the anima questline is just a smart stockpile of poetics away. So start on my speedrun anima guide in which I got this weapon myself and cover all the poetics grinding bases to get it as well. So standing here, I realize I will never get this weapon. But like I said before, that doesn't make this a less attractive option. And oh boy, this is a damn sexy one. I would easily grant this gun a podium spot without the color shift effects and the hacking like glitches circling around, but whoever had the idea on that stylish shift needs to be made CEO of the true endgame. Not only that this makes up the best looking machinist weapon so far, but it was so good that it cleansed Square Enix whoopsie on the Dragonsong ultimate weapons. Oh, and let's not forget that these are so heavy visual highlights that you can literally see them from outer space, which is very important for reprogging the Omega fight of course. Definitely a top tier weapon for a top tier job, both departments covered in 6.3, so I guess the American government approves Team Yoshida's work another time. Last but not least, let me spend my closing thoughts on some honorable mentions. Starting with a fluffy and very uwu weapon, the face crown hand gunny. Fairy wings, market board, bubbles, what else do you need? Yes, the new 6.3 trial flame cloaked revolver has a very sick gun design with cloth around it. Very cool alternative as well. Biako weapons are also something very interesting, especially combined with the one or the other glam, so check if you have that glam that fits. But in general, check the market board, there are insanely cool choices here, the Tsukuyomi's Moonlit Revolver for example, or the Augmented Ekplexis, Fire of the Goddess, Fire of the Demon, and many many more. So again, sorry to have kept you waiting, but with two 6.3 weapons featured here, it was worth it I guess. The more, I hope that this list can inspire your true endgame, and would love to see you again on another job coming soon. Until then, don't run out of bullets, have a wonderful time, and keep loving Final Fantasy. <laughs>